Take your Bibles and turn to the book of Hebrews. Chapter number is 9. Hebrews chapter 9. Hebrews chapter 9, verse number 12. The Bible says, Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. For if the blood of bulls and of goats, and the ashes of an heifer sprinkling the unclean, Sanctify to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. And for this cause he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the First Testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. For where a testament is, there must also of necessity be the death of the testator. For a testament is a force after men are dead. Otherwise, it is of no strength at all while the testator liveth. Whereupon, neither the first testament was dedicated without blood. For when Moses had spoken every precept to all the people according to the law he took the blood of calves and of goats with water and scarlet wool and hyssop and sprinkled both the book and all the people saying this is the blood of the testament which God hath enjoined unto you moreover he sprinkled with blood both the tabernacle and all the vessels of ministry and almost all things are by the law purged with blood, and without shedding of blood is no remission. Verse 25, Nor yet that he should offer himself often as a high priest in earth into the holy place every year with the blood of others. For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world, but now, once in the end of the world, hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. And as, he is, and as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment, so Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall appear the second time without sin unto salvation. A little praying. Lord, one more time we plead the blood of Jesus Christ. God, that you would wash us clean, wash this place clean the blood of Jesus Christ. God, that you'd wash my heart, mind, and soul clean in the blood of Jesus Christ. And God, I pray that this morning as I preach that you would give liberty. I pray, God, that what you once said would get said. Lord, if it goes well, it gets said. Everything you once said would be said. If the devil fights, God, that it would still be said, I plead the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. God, would you please accomplish what you want done today? I certainly would not have an idea or even a clue as to the need. And Lord, you know the need of every heart. Would you work? Help me to say it like you want it said. I beg and I plead in Jesus' name, amen. This morning, obviously, the Bible calls your attention to blood. Obviously, the right kind of a Bible is going to be a bloody book. Obviously, from what you read in Hebrews chapter 9, it is essential that you and I consider the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. You have read probably more than a half a dozen times about the blood of the Lord in distinction or as well as the blood by comparison of bulls, goats, and the animal sacrifices of the Old Testament. 
And you and I need to realize how very, very important the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ is. And how powerful the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ is. The Bible speaks about how the Lord did it one time for sins forever. He does not have to be nailed to the cross, not even a second time. That blood does not have to be shed, number two, not a second time. One time is all that's required, and the blood of Jesus Christ is so powerful and so eternal that even today, that which the blood can do, it'll still do today. The blood has never lost its power. Thank God for the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. One time in the Word of God, there was a man by the name of Apollos. If you remember him in Acts chapter 18, he was an outstanding man. He was an eloquent man. He was an orator. He could say it and say it very well. He was convincing. He, could, uh, he was mighty when he spoke. He had some things right. He did not have everything right. And the apostles took him aside and said, Looky here, you've got a lot going. You're very convincing. You're not afraid of the public. You're good with public speaking. You've got all that right. Now there's one more thing that needs turned around and one thing you need never forget. And that's true of every one of us. You and I, you may have this right and that right. In the Bible, that's the way it is. In the Bible, in Second Peter chapter 1, it's you add to your faith this, then this, then this, then this. And there's always one more thing for you and I to add to the work of the Holy Spirit of God. And especially, you and I need to add this thing right here, whereas we are locked in on the blood. And every time we witness to somebody, we tell them about the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Every time you and I get around somebody's lost, you and I deal with them pertaining to the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, that you and I never lose sight of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. You and I need to add that to our rapport. You and I need to uh, lock in on the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, you and I, as well as others, we must learn to plead the blood. In verse number 14, the Bible says, How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve a living God? Then if you and I are going to be of service to God, you and I have got to have a clear, clean conscience in the eyes of God. Things have got to be well with your soul. You've got to have peace like a river. And things have got to be right with you and God. And it's the blood of Jesus Christ that does it. The Bible says the blood of Jesus Christ will come in there. And the Bible says it will purge your conscience from dead works to serve a living God. You and I have got to learn to plead the blood of Jesus Christ. If it can do that, it doesn't matter what the past may have been. The Bible says it will purge your conscience and you can be of service to the Lord Jesus Christ. What about it, my friend? And you and I need to realize it doesn't matter who you are. The territory automatically puts you in a position where you will be defiled to a greater or lesser degree. I mean, just the very territory that you and I have to function in, operate in, it is not heaven. We are in the midst of sinners, and because of that, you and I need to realize that we must constantly learn to plead the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. You have got to be able to go to God and go to Him and, I mean, plead the blood and remain a clean vessel in the eyes of God. I remember years ago, being down for a while, and in this five-day period of time which I was down, mostly, constantly, on my back, I looked at the Bible like this. And the Bible says, Now are you clean through the word that I've spoken unto you. For five days I did nothing but look at the Word of God. Outside of that was considering things God put on my heart and jotting down some notes. Uh, outside of that it was listening to Brother Roloff uh, uh, sing and preach and exhort for five straight days. Did not realize the effect that it actually had. Until I left my house on the sixth day, headed downtown, and did not even get downtown and realized, oh no. Did not realize how that 
right before your eyes and to your surprise and to your dismay there is that very thing paraded before you that would tend to defile your conscience and defile your mind and you've got to learn to plead the blood it's there you and I need to realize the territory in which we function or operate. Uh, you're going to have to learn to constantly plead the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's a must. If you're going to be of service to the Lord, it is a must to constantly be pleading the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. There are, and you will see more of it now that the weather has uh, turned somewhat. There is that type of people that will flaunt what they've got they will taunt you with what they've got you have got to learn to plead the blood I like what brother Dave Dougherty said I think the last time he preached he made a statement he says you don't get a man by uncovering you get a man by covering it up That'll be the opposite of what goes on these days. That's correct. The way you get the right kind of a man is you keep yourself covered up and the right kind will be attracted your way. You uncover yourself and the wrong kind will get the wrong message or perhaps a message that is wrong and you're trying to send. They'll get the message and down you go. Now you and I have got to learn to plead the blood. And the Bible says if you're going to be of service to him, and you're going to keep your conscience clean, and you're going to be able to go full tilt, you're going to have to learn to plead the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Important that you and I learn that lesson. God uses a clean vessel. In 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse number 22, it's the Lord who says, uh, nevertheless, he said, God, he, the foundation of God stand is sure. What is it? God wants, to, wants you to be a clean vessel, sanctified and meet for the master's use. If you're going to be of service, verse number 14, if you're going to be of use to the cause of the Lord Jesus Christ, you've got to be a clean vessel, and to remain clean, you've got to learn to plead the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, if you don't do that, let me tell you something, dear friend, there have been better Christians than you or I that have gone down, have gone down hard, have crashed, have crashed in a million pieces, never to be put back together again. You have got to learn to plead the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. The very territory in which we live, because of what is on us, because of what is out there, you and I, if we're going to remain a clean vessel, a vessel that God can use, you and I, no matter who you are, you and I have got to learn to constantly, daily, regularly plead the blood of the Lord Jesus. Obviously, the blood's very, very, very important. When you read as much as you read in those few verses about the blood, the blood, the blood, obviously, it is extremely important. Now, not only do you and I have to plead the blood, you and I have to proclaim the blood. And in the Bible, in the New Testament, there's just blood everywhere. Now, I say that because, you know, the tendency is to give your testimony. And when I first got saved, I knew no Bible. When I say no Bible, I mean zero. I would say everybody here knows the first book of the Bible. You know Genesis, that's where it starts. I did not know that. When you first get saved, maybe you don't know much, so what do you do? You can give your testimony. But down the road a little piece, you want to sort of set that aside, and you want to be talking more about the Lord, and more about Calvary, and more about the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, and that needs to replace your testimony for the most part. Now, you take Paul and his ministry, used his testimony, and what a testimony he had. And testimony, of course, you know how God dealt with you, and the situation you were in when God dealt with you, and how you responded, and how you got saved, and, and uh, Paul had a tremendous testimony. 
And if you have a spectacular or tremendous testimony, that'll be your tendency to preach all the time your testimony. And, you know, if it's not spectacular, sometimes we have that tendency as well. When I first got saved, and I, you know, would give my testimony, didn't know nothing else. Then later on, uh, again, it got to the point where I remember one time Brother Kip said he'd give my testimony. I mean, he heard so many times he could give it. And I thought, whoa, that's all right to a point. I'm not ashamed of my testimony. I would testify and tell you how God dealt with my soul. And I can tell you when I got saved. I may not know the date. I know the year. I know the month. I remember the incident. I can tell you my testimony. However, better to sort of set it aside, get it aside, use it for the right occasion, and for the most part, be preaching the blood of the Lamb, the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, the blood, the blood, the blood. That's what it's all about. Not your testimony, although it can be of some help. You know, sometimes somebody has very spectacular testimonies and their, te their tendency would be to just lean that way. No matter whether it's spectacular or routine, such as mine was, just more or less on the routine side, you want to eventually, you want to wean away from that and you want to realize that it has to do with the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. As you read the Word of God, you read about it, you read about it, what do you know? You read about it again. And so as a result, there is a time and there is a place uh, for your testimony. But I'll tell you what, there's a lot more time and there's a lot more places for you and I to preach the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now stop and think. Paul's testimony, Damascus Road, say, wow. Decked by the Lord, wow. Heard the voice, Wow. Saw the brightness above the noonday sun. Wow, man! I can't believe that testimony. And yet with a testimony like that, when it came down to salvation, and the Philippian jailer said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Answer. You say, well, I'll tell you what he did with me. And go to your testimony. Oh, no. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and thy house. And it seemed like as though that Paul, I mean, he set his aside, although he used it somewhat, he set it aside and preached primarily the blood. In Romans chapter 3 and verse number 25, uh, Paul makes a statement there. It's about the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. It says, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God. Notice verse 25, the Bible says, be a propitiation through faith in his blood. Look at Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5, verse number 1. Therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse number 9, much more than being now justified by his blood. By faith, by faith in his blood, like you read in Romans chapter 3. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. That's Paul. That's Paul's ministry. That's Paul's message. Look at Colossians chapter 1. It seemed like as though he set his testimony aside and he preached primarily the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ because that is where it is at. Colossians chapter 1. Verse number 14, the Bible says, In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Redemption, forgiveness of sins through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse number 20, And having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself, by him I say, whether it be things in earth or things in heaven, and it goes on and says some other things. Then reconciliations by the blood. Forgiveness is by the blood. Redemption is by the blood. Remission is by the blood. Justification is by the blood. 
and everything you read in the Word of God seem like Paul realized, man, I can set my testimony aside. I'll use it from time to time. On occasion, I'll use my testimony, but major on the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Romans, in Ephesians, in Colossians, Paul majored on the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the writer of Hebrews, there is no doubt about the fact the major thrust was on the proclamation of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's the way it's supposed to be for you and I. We testify and preach. And we testify the gospel of the grace of God. And preach the atoning blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul said, testifying both to Jews and the Greeks also, repentance towards God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. Faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. Believing the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ is sufficient to forgive your sins and will forgive your sins. You trust the Lord Jesus and you call upon him to wash you in his precious blood, testifying uh, repentance towards God and faith toward the Lord Jesus Christ. And he says, testifying the gospel of the grace of God. That is where the sinner, I mean, God will take you as you are. God will wash you clean. I mean, spotless by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. He will do it right now. You and I need to realize we've got to plead the blood. We've got to proclaim. We've got to preach the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we've got to present the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Look at verse number 15. And for this cause he is the mediator of the New Testament. That by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the First Testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. For where a testament is, there must also of necessity be the death of the testator. For a testament is a force after men are dead. Otherwise it is of no strength at all while the testator liveth. It's as though something has altered. One situation was at best yearly. It was what you and I would consider temporal. And the temporal has been exchanged for the eternal. The Bible speaks about eternal redemption in verse number 12. The Bible speaks about the eternal spirit in verse number 14. The Bible that you just read mentions eternal inheritance. And something has been altered. Something has been changed. There has been a new testament that has begun with the crucifixion of the Lord Jesus Christ. When the Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross, died, died, died on the cross, shed the blood, shed his very life's blood for you and I. A new testament began and therefore you and I present the blood as having given opportunity for a brand new start. If somebody needs a new start, you've got to get started all over again. It's the blood that will enable you to have that brand spanking new start. A New Testament follows the death of the Lord Jesus on the cross of Calvary. You need a new start. What do you do? It's the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 1, If we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. Listen, and the blood of Jesus Christ his Son, listen, cleanseth us from a double L, all sin. Need a brand new start? You and I, let them know there's where you start. There's a starting point. You get yourself washed in the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the blood of Jesus Christ is sufficient to forgive one and forgive all. And the Bible says, all sin, thank God for that. A new start by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me tell you something else. It's not only a new start. When somebody gets saved, it's a, a guaranteed finish. As I called your attention to verse 12, eternal. As I called your attention to verse 14, that term, eternal. As I called your attention to verse number 15, there she is again. There's that word one more time. Then whereas you may have difficulty... You have to still realize the finish is guaranteed. 
Once somebody trusts the shed blood of the Lord Jesus, once they get washed in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, that is something that is perpetual from now till you get out of here. It cleanseth us from all sin. The finish is guaranteed. And thank God for that. Sometimes you think, well, you know, I'm young. I don't think I can hold on. I don't think I can hang. Uh, I don't believe I can hold on. I don't think I can, you know, do this. I don't think I can. Well, you don't have to worry about that, my friend. It's God. It's God's side. Once you give yourself to Him, and once you trust the blood, the rest is God's. And the Bible says that blood, it never loses its power, and it never quits cleansed you from all your sin. And the blood of Jesus Christ, it'll give you a new start and a guaranteed finish. What do you need today? It's wrapped up in the blood. Do you need justified? Do you need reconciled? Do you need forgiven? Do you need redeemed? Do you need cleansed? Do you need your conscience? I said your conscience purged. Say so that's ridiculous. It couldn't do that. You ought to try it. You ought to try and see what the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ can do for you. You and I have got to plead the blood. We proclaim the blood. And we present the opportunity of a brand new start to this world, to sinners. But that new start is based upon one thing. That brand new start is based on the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. You want somebody goes along without that and the flesh gets a hold, the flesh takes over. The picture is not pretty. The picture that you read about in the, in fact it's reality, but it, the picture of Galatians chapter 5 is not a pretty picture. And yet there are some of the sins that are listed there that are common. They are commonly reported among you. So much so that you and I have heard the term, everybody's doing it. And the Bible says those things are not to be once named among you. They become common. Say so that's going to change. That won't change till the Lord Jesus Christ gets us out of here. Because even in the tribulation, that sin of fornication is prevalent. It is everywhere, and they refuse to repent of that sin. It's that common. And you and I need to take and show somebody, friend, what you really need is a brand new start. It may not be that sin, but what about this? This or this? You know, sin is sin in the eyes of God. And some things you and I look at as a little fault, flaw, glitch. In the eyes of God, they're exceeding sinful. God doesn't look at it like we look at it. We wink at it. We turn our head. We pass it by. We lose our convictions. We fail to realize how evil and wicked it really is. Until you look at it from God's standpoint. And then you realize. That these little white lies. Are exceeding sinful. And this little thing of I gotta have it. Gotta have it. Gotta have it. Covetousness is idolatry. And exceeding sinful. However you and I realize. That the blood of Jesus Christ. Is the answer. And I would like to ask you my friend. To present the blood. Today I present to you the blood of Jesus. If you need a new start, I can tell you where it's at. If you've never been saved, you do need a new start. I can tell you how to get that new start. I can tell you how to get a start that has, according to the Word of God, a guaranteed finish. Thank God for it. And you and I that try to witness for the Lord need to realize sometimes we preach our convictions and our rules and our creeds and the result really is what you'd look for but if you and I learn to present the blood you know a lot of people the devil's taken down 
He'll take them down as early as he can. He will take them down. He doesn't wait till you're 50 years of age. He don't wait till you're 25 years of age. He'll take you down as quickly as he can. He'll take you as far down as you let him go. You and I, you and I need to realize, thank God, somebody that the devil has taken down can find a new start again. New Testament. We start all over. We've got something now that's guaranteed to last for all eternity. If you want a new start, I can tell you just where it's at. You read the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood. You know by now where it's at. That new start, there has been a vision there. Enmity, enmity between you and God. Reconciliation can be yours based on the blood justification sinner friend can be yours the blood is the basis all hinges on the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ last of all let me say this you and I need to realize that we need to prepare by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ you remember the term in the Bible prepare to meet thy God O Israel and it's as though when you see this come to pass, and this come to pass, you better wake up. You better realize that the clock is about to strike 12. Prepare to meet thy God. He says it's going to be this way in one town or be this way in another town. How you see this come to pass, prepare to meet thy God. Obviously, as you consider 2 Timothy, Chapter 3, and all that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Obviously, as you consider the happenings of the last week or so, I would say that there, undoubtedly, this is the time to prepare to meet thy God. As you consider Genesis chapter 6, and you weigh it out, and, and it's going to be that way before the Lord's return, I repeated that again, you say, then it's time to prepare to meet thy God. You and I understand that now is the time while well, you've got the opportunity and with what's at hand and before it goes any further and before you go any further, now is the time to prepare to meet thy God. And that's the way you prepare. If you're going to prepare to meet him, you get your sins forgiven by the blood of the Lord. If you're going to prepare for service, you get your conscience clean by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I don't know what your need may be. The Bible says here in verse number 22, and almost all things are by the law purged with blood, and without shedding of blood is no remission. You know what forgiveness really is? It's where God takes the sins you've committed against him and says, I have no case against you anymore. They're remitted. It's as though the case I had against you you're guilty. You are guilty. You've been tried, weighed out, measured by the Word of God. You've been found guilty, and you're going to pay the price. You sin against the eternal God, you pay forever. You're going to go to hell, and you're going to pay forever. You get your sins under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. The case that God had against you is now remitted. God pulls it back and says, I have no case against them anymore. It's all over. I have nothing against them, nothing at all, nothing whatsoever. And you and I know that now is the time. You and I know that, man, if we're going to be prepared, if we're going to be prepared to meet thy God, now is the time to get prepared to meet thy God, and it's going to take the blood of Jesus Christ. There's nothing else going to prepare you to meet the blood of, uh, to meet the Lord Jesus Christ outside the blood of the Lord Jesus, and you and I need to get sins under the blood right now, wash in the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Revelation chapter 1, verse number 5, the Bible speaks of that very thing. And from Jesus Christ, who is a faithful witness, and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. Thank God for that. The Lord Jesus Christ today wants to wash you from your sins. 
Everybody else wants to condemn you. Say, ah, oh, yeah, look at that. Ah, oh, yeah, I know what they are going. Ah, oh, yeah, I know what they do. Ah, oh, yeah, I know all about it. They want to condemn you because of your sins. The Lord says, I want to wash you. I want to wash you clean. I want to reconcile with you. I want to make you fit for the Master's use. I want to not only forgive your sins or admit your sins, I want to take your conscience. And I want to purge your conscience so it doesn't eat you up. Because you can't do anything. If that past is troubling you, and that past is eating at you, you're not going to be in service like God wants you to be. You're going to always be apprehensive. Who's seen me? What about this? What about that? And if God gives you a perfect conscience and purges that conscience, you'll go full tilt. It wouldn't matter. You'll go at it. But yes, I was a reprobate. Yes, I was no good. But the blood of Jesus Christ has cleansed me. And thank God for the blood. Plead the blood, dear brother. Plead the blood, dear sister. Plead the blood, dear sinner. It's the blood that'll do it. Proclaim the blood. Because all through the Bible, and especially the New Testament, it's the blood, blood, and blood of the Lord. And present to somebody the opportunity of a new start by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because this devil, the devil is a master of taking people down. He's a destroyer. He's a deceiver. And you present the blood and say, Maybe you have been taken down. However, you have opportunity of a new start. Let's get up. Let's get up and plead the blood. Let's get up, plead the blood, and go on from dead works to serve a living God. You present the opportunity of a new start by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And you prepare to meet thy God. It doesn't matter who you are. You prepare to meet thy God by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yesterday, Shirley and I were going down the road. She said, look at that license plate. And the license plate said, no dash X Q U E-S, I think that was it. It's like this. It's no excuse. And you can apply it to the passage here. It's as though it's obvious what the Lord's trying to tell you. It's obvious that he has targeted in on the blood. It's obvious that he wants you to think about the blood. It's obvious that he wants you to dwell richly and think deeply about the blood. It's obviously uh, a fact that he's trying to etch on the table of your heart the word blood, the B-L-O-O-D, that Jesus shed for me. He's trying to target you and obviously wants you to think of the blood so that you just never have an excuse uh, that you know you've got to plead the blood you know you've got to preach the blood you know you've got to uh, present the blood and you've got to prepare by the blood it's obvious that that's where it's at it's obvious that that's the major thing he's trying to get across to you there's no doubt about that and you now have no excuse because you read it read it, read it and read it it's like this if a preacher was going to do it right, he was going to preach to you about the cross of Calvary. He would begin to talk about a cross, the various types of crosses. He would target in on the cross of the Lord Jesus. And he would then begin to talk about the cross, some more about the cross. Don't forget this too about the cross. 
Oh yes, did you see this about the cross? And when you walked out of the door, all you would think about is the cross. The cross. The cross. When you sat down to your noon meal, you would sit there eating, thinking of the cross. The cross. The cross. Six months from now, you'd think back, oh yeah, I was in that church, I remember he preached on the cross. The cross. The cross. You know what the Lord did? The Lord took this very, very important thing, the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he did that with the design to do that very thing to you. So that you will think when you walk out the door, the blood, the blood, the blood. When you sit down to your meal today, you will think of the blood, the blood, the blood. And six months from now, you think about that, that service. That, that was Missionary Sunday, and he preached about the blood, the blood, the blood. You will think of the blood, the Lord. You know, Brother Bemis used to say this about a certain preacher, said he would listen to him. And when he got done, right, say, oh, so that's what you're trying to tell me. That's what you, but you know something? You and I have no excuse because undoubtedly you know what the Lord has been trying to tell you. He's been trying to tell you, get washed in the blood. Trust the blood. Get redeemed by the blood. Get reconciled by the blood. Get you a new start by the blood. Get you a guaranteed finish by the blood. The Lord's been trying to tell you that, and you don't have any excuse now. You could say, well, yeah, exactly, no excuse. Because he put it on you, put it on you, put it on you, and put it on you some more. I want to ask you what you're going to do with it. Maybe you need a new start. I want to ask you, how do you expect to get it? There's no way in the Bible outside of the blood. And you and I, you may not want to be defiled, but even surprisingly and by surprise and taken by surprise, you will be. And you have got to plead daily even more than daily, you have got to plead the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. The blood is where it's at. Steve Donnelly wrote this little insert. He said, Dear friends, please forgive me for the delay in this newsletter. It was finished and only needed copied and mailed when I received a call from Enduric that an accident had occurred and I was needed to come to Enduric and preach a funeral. I dropped everything and headed to Canada. I preached the funeral in the village of Arctic Red. The gym was packed and the people stood in halls and on outside steps. This was the first time the gospel had successfully been preached in this exclusively Roman Catholic village. One failed attempt ended with the nun chasing the lay preacher out of town with a broom. This day, yet under much oppression, I successfully preached. Several got up and left before I'd spoken the first word. Glares and whispers were evident. When I preached the blood of Jesus Christ as payment for sin, sin's death, it was not well received. I pressed on and completed the message. I expected no response from the hostile crowd and received none. Nevertheless, before the turn of the millennium, a village that never heard the gospel had heard. The 28-year-old man who lay in a closed casket before me had played games with God all his life. He knew the gospel well and had made a profession of faith in my office several years ago. Yet he never overcame Satan's tempting offers. He wallowed in sin year after year until April 10, 1999. 
May 2nd, April 10th, three weeks ago. He lost control of his pickup truck at a high speed and turned on the Dempster Highway. Three buddies were in the truck with him. All three were treated and released. The driver was thrown, killed by his own vehicle. A friend of mine arrived in the scene minutes after the accident. He described the scene to me. There was booze everywhere. The truck wasn't too badly damaged. The other guys were standing around barely scratched. I, his friend, went to the front of the truck and saw the driver laying there. Blood was everywhere. And I couldn't even recognize that it was the driver he knew. The whole side of his head was, and he did not finish, he couldn't finish the description. Steve said he's glad he couldn't. But you notice what he said? He said, booze was everywhere. And then he said, the result being blood was everywhere. And he said, I preach the blood of the Lord Jesus as a payment for sin's debt. It was not well received. But they heard. You know something? That's what the Lord has done for you. And I don't know what your life has consisted of. Maybe it's been booze everywhere. Maybe it's been whatever else. Everywhere and all the time. Maybe the sin of the day has been common among you. I just know that the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ presents and offers to you now a brand new start. If you're not saved, prepare to meet thy God. If you are saved, put her under the blood. Don't let the past destroy you. Let the blood of Jesus Christ purge your conscience. Get yourself up. Learn to plead the blood daily and all the time. And go on serve a wonderful living God. It's the blood of the blood, the blood. As you read that, you have no excuse whatsoever. You know what to do. You know how to do it. And the Bible says you do it by faith. Now, sad to say, when Steve Donnelly preached that, it was a hostile crowd. Didn't, didn't expect much of a response and got none. I don't feel like I'm preaching to a hostile crowd. And so I expect God to get some response from you. And I expect a lot of response. I expect you to take this opportunity for a brand new start. And start even now. The blood. Remember. It's not. What's he trying to tell me? You know what he's saying. There's no excuse. It's this way. What are you going to do? And what are you going to do with it even now? Lord, thank you now for the word of God, and please, Lord, that you would work in a very mighty way. And God, I pray, Lord, that each one here would never ever forget this message on the blood. God, as summertime approaches, it's very important that we learn to plead instantly and on the spot the blood. And God, I pray that as we go out, we would not preach a bunch of rules or personal convictions, but number one, number one, the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. God, to one and all this morning, I know you, by the blood, offer a new start. And God, would you squeeze on hearts, and I pray, Lord, that each one here be prepared to meet thee through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. May the need of their heart be shown to them. May it be very clear. May it be very explicit. May they act upon what you told them to do in the Word of God. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Stand and sing now just a little bit. 392. 392 in a songbook, fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins. Dear friend, that fountain today is open. Something needs done, let's do it. Well, these have come. Maybe you need to come. Maybe there's somebody needs to step out. Come, get your new start. The blood's the answer. Come while we sing. Would you come? Please step out and come now. Come on. New start. New Testament. This side the cross. Come on.
That's the way to do it. Beneath that blood. Come on. Opportunity is knocking at your door. Come on, dear friend. Respond. React to what you heard and what you read. Would you come? Please come. Another verse as we continue to sing. If you need to come, you need a new start. You know where it's at. Do something about it. You're not hostile, but you may be hardened. What you need to do is tender your heart. Say, God, you don't hope I have the blood. Outside the blood, I have no chance whatsoever. Would you please wash me clean? God, do something to my conscience. Purge my conscience so I can go at it once again. You need to come, step out and come as we sing verse number two. Come on, come right now. Oh, God, right now, come on. Rejoice to see a fountain in his name. Please, dear friend. And there may I, though fireless he wash all my sins away. Wash all my sins away. Wash all my sins away. We start brand spanking new. And All over again. And there may I, though fireless he wash all my sins I want to ask you to bow your heads now, close your eyes, do some praying. And I want to ask a couple questions here. Number one, have you ever, by faith, trusted the shed blood of the Lord Jesus to save your soul? Have you ever done that? Salvation lies only, only in the blood of the Lord Jesus. If you've done that, would you please keep your heads bowed but signify the uplifted hand, yes, Brother Martin, I have. You could not raise your hand, you put them down, but if you could not raise your hand, I did not see everybody. I don't need to see everybody, but you know, sometimes we don't do it all right, but there must be a starting point. There must be that time when you have trust of the Lord, the blood and the blood alone, is sufficient payment for your sins. And if you could not raise your hand, please, let's get that issue settled today. Number two, maybe you've raised your hand and there has been a time when you received the Lord as your Savior. Your need now is a new start. Well, dear friend, the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanseth us from all sin. And on top of that, as well as that, will purge your conscience. Say, then why does it always bother me? It's not the Lord. The only chance you have is not medication, not drugs, it's the blood new start with what for why to serve a living God you're on the shelf you're on the shelf because you want on the shelf not because God wants you on the shelf the devil puts you there and you choose to remain there the blood will give you a new start let's do something with it what is the need got salvation covered need a new start Let's get it. One more verse. Keep your heads bowed. And as Frank sings, we'll let Frank sing verse number three. And as he sings, you weigh out what's been said. What do you need to do? What would God have you to do? Then do it. Brother Frank. Ever since by faith I saw Do what God wants you to do. I flow in wounds You need to come, dear friend. Come on. If I could just do it for you, I would. I and be I Come on, still time. And be Come on, new start. And be Come on, come 
about it. Redeeming love has been thy thing and shall be to my love. Okay, keep your head bowed in closing prayer by Brother Jeff Sloot. Amen. Lord bless you. You're dismissed. We look for you tonight. Children's choir practice at six. Sign up for the ball team. That's it.